Hello, Lorna. Lovely to meet you. Hi, lovely to meet you too. This is your new toy. It is indeed. This is our latest, the most brand new uh, A330 900 Neo aircraft uh, that we've added to Virgin Atlantic's fleet. Myself and Chris, the technical pilot, took delivery of this personally about five and a half weeks ago. The Ruby Rebel, great name. Thank can you. I take a look? You certainly can. You're most welcome. Come on board. Right then. Oh, here we go. It even smells new. It's right, brand I new. normally turn right when I get on a plane. Would you like to come this way, turn left on this occasion, come and see my office? Oh yes, please. Oh wow, and, and what an office. And well, you've got an office mate as well. Indeed, this is Chris, Chris Rocher, he's our technical pilot and he's been flying at Virgin Atlantic for even longer than me. Nice to meet you Chris. Good afternoon. Uh, Chris has been flying for 28 years. How long have you been flying with Virgin for? So I've been flying at Virgin for 19 years. I've had my commercial license for nearly 24 years now. Goodness me, and what was your entry into the profession? Because I know you were a research scientist before you became a pilot. Yes, I always tell people you can have multiple careers throughout your life, and they say you can have three careers, and I, I certainly uh, started as a research scientist. But I always flew uh, light aircraft and gliders. Gliders is where I started. From the age of seven, I was strapped to my dad's um, seat uh, with an instructor in the front in a two-seat uh, glider, and yeah. he was hooked and so was I, and that passion for aviation stayed with me. I had a career as a research scientist, and it wasn't until one of my commercial pilot friends actually said, why don't you fly, get your pilot's license, and get paid for it, to do what you love? Yeah. I was lucky enough to get a job with the low-cost carriers, Go and EasyJet, yeah. but ever since I, my first taxi in British Midland at London Heathrow Airport, I remember waiting on the taxiway, and I saw a Virgin Atlantic jumbo jet coming in to land. And I was sat in my tiny little 737. I think Concorde, actually, I know this is slightly cheesy, has just taken off so you could feel the vibrations from Concorde taking off. And Virgin Atlantic was the next aircraft to come into land. And I just thought, that is where I want to be. Here I am today, sat as a captain, as the deputy chief pilot, in fact. And 20 or so years later, that passion, I can see, is clearly still there for yes. you. In, in all of the crew that we have, we have fantastic pilots. Um, the cabin crew, the engineers, I mean you, you can't work in this industry unless you're passionate about it because it's so varied, um, no day is the same, there are multiple challenges, it's all about problem solving so yeah. you need to have dynamic characters and personalities to, to be involved in this profession and it's no, no two days are ever the same. Well you have a fantastic office, at least this part of your office, uh, I want to find out more about entries to the profession and maybe some of the challenges but maybe we take a look uh, elsewhere okay. on the Ruby Rebel uh, so, so we can do that. Sounds like a good plan. We'll leave Chris to set up the aircraft for our departure later. Thanks Chris. Thank you very much. So you've got three different classes in this craft. Just walk through upper class. And Indeed. This is the social space. We call it the loft. The loft. Okay, so grab a seat in the loft. It's much comfier than my loft. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think so. Uh, now Lorna, you've been working for Virgin for almost two decades now. How if we say 19 years, it sounds a lot less. Okay, okay, <laughs> fine. Um, so uh, in that time, how have you seen the industry change, in particular with regards to the number of female pilots that you are uh, seeing on the flight deck? Percentage, I don't believe, has significantly changed. I think the national average uh, percentage of female pilots in the industry that has a commercial pilot's license is uh, around 5.6. Mm. And we are roughly at that level at Virgin Atlantic. But I'm here to say that anyone can fly an aircraft. You don't have to have a degree in uh, astrophysics. You don't even have to have A-levels. You just have to have a passion and a commitment um, and be flexible and adaptable in this industry. And I think determination is the biggest thing uh, mm. to drive you if you do have that passion for aviation. Where there's a will, there's a way. I think the good news is that the latest CAA data seems it's more than 40% I think of new female pilots being granted commercial licenses over the last four years, which sounds great, even if overall it's still not a large number in comparison to male pilots. I think we have to realise that it's not going to be something that we can switch on overnight, so we're doing everything we can in small increments and maybe in I don't know, 10 years time we'll see uh, equilibrium in the number of male and female pilots, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. What do you think the barriers to entry are that are preventing more females from entering the profession as a pilot? I think it's really just self-imposed barriers if I'll be honest mm. um, and it comes through the generations and it starts from when you're about three or four years old. Girls typically are told to be quiet and will only pipe up to a questioning class yeah. when they're 100% sure of the answer. So when you look at a long-haul aircraft such as this carrying 
well, this one's 264 passengers and all the responsibility that entails, it might put a lot of people off. Uh, males and females yeah. but what I would say is you don't get given a jet straight away and, and told to depart from Heathrow the training from from zero to uh, flying your first commercial airliner full-time at a flying school is 13 months and you do it very very incrementally you have lots of support um, the training in industry is excellent yeah. so I would say if you have a passion please do not be put off that you don't have a scientific degree obviously it might help marginally but once you get on that training course everything will be provided for you and you'll be surrounded by aviation um, enthusiasts that will help you on your way. We all have peaks and troughs throughout our life and throughout our careers and I would say if you are even slightly interested do some research, look us up at virginatlantic.com and see what career opportunities we have. Finally, I know you do a lot of work with young people. When a young person comes to you and says Lorna I want to be a pilot like you, what's the piece of advice that you give to them? Well, like, firstly, I'll say, fantastic, you've obviously got a passion there. Um, and I try and share my energy and passion for the aviation industry by supporting and encouraging and offering advice such as where to find information on how you become a pilot. And there's obviously a lot of information on the internet. Google is your friend. But speaking to someone you know in the industry, whether it be a pilot or an engineer, um, going to your local airfield, there are university air squadrons, the, uh, there are air leagues, there are sponsors, uh, bursaries, and we take on cadets that have got zero flying hour experience and then they can get their hands on a, a shiny jet such as one of these. So it's all about being determined and having a passion for the industry. So I would just always encourage that. Lorna, thank you for showing us your passion for the industry and indeed for this shiny new jet that you've just taken delivery of. I wish you many, many successful, happy miles in her. Very nice to meet you, thank you very much, and I hope to see you on board a Virgin Atlantic aircraft again soon. Yeah, particularly when I'm turning left. Indeed, come and say hi. <laughs>